Um, let's look now, pressing on in this topic, we're looking at Muslim theology and praxis. And we've looked at the five pillars of Muslim theology and, uh, and the five pillars of Muslim praxis. And now I want to look at point three in the outline, what Muslims believe um, their mission to be in the world. And they believe they have a mission to the whole world. So the mission is expressed in the call to prayer five times daily. When I was in, in Somaliland with Badru Katrega for those dialogues just a year ago with, with the Somali uh, World Vision uh, staff, why uh, he, I'll never forget, he was saying, from the minarets all over the world, five times a day, we bear witness to the truth of Islam and with urgency invite people to come and pray and to believe, you see. So that call <laughs> from the minarets, if you go to a Muslim country, it's like, a, like an orchestra all over the city. This, this, this proclamation of the confession of faith and this urgent invitation to so come and experience well-being, come and pray. And so Muslims believe they have this witness to give to all nations, um, the truth of Islam. And in regards to Christians, as I experience our Muslim friends, and also, also as I read within the Quran, um, Muslims feel that they have a mission to the Christian church to help us recover and preserve unity. Their observation is that the church at the time of Muhammad was quite divided on Christological issues and so forth. And even today, there's divisions within the church. And so the Muslim movement is called to help Christians to, to experience unity. And how does that happen? By clarifying their theology, especially in regards to the Trinity and Jesus, which they feel is a distorted theology. So Muslims have this mission to help us clarify our theology that we might become truly, truly unified. And when Christians live in areas that are ruled by Muslims, Muslims have the responsibility to protect the Christians. These Christians are referred to as dimi, as the dimi. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So I won't say much about it now, but they're to be protected. But in that protection, of course, there are certain constraints that Christians need to live with as protected communities. And so within the worldwide mission of Islam, there is this lively awareness of the presence of the church and Muslim responsibilities in regards to the church. And the mission of Islam is to bring every area under the authority of Islam. The whole Iranian ever evolution is about that. They say that God's will is Tawheed, that God is Tawheed. That's not very clear. God's will is Tawheed, God is Tawheed. His will is also Tawheed. There's this one will of God, and that all cultures and nations should submit to that one will of God. And that's the essence of the Iranian Revolution. That God is one, his will is one, and so let's us attempt to bring all of Iranian society under the authority of this one will of God, as expressed in the Sharia, in the Islamic law. And within the Muslim movement, um, the mission of the movement uh, has two faces to it. The one face is called Dawah, which means invitation. Invitation. And that's proclaimed in the mosque all over the world. You know, God is most great, God is most great. Muhammad is the prophet of God. So come and experience peace. Come and pray. That invitation, that proclamation and invitation. Dawah. The other dimension of the world Muslim movement is Dawlah, which refers to the political dimension of the mission of Islam. For example, I was in, uh, in Canada here a couple years ago and had lunch with a Muslim theologian who is my friend. And I asked him, um, what is the mission of the Muslim movement in Canada that you are leading? You're one of the leaders of that movement. What is your mission? And he says to me, a Christian pastor, two things. First, bear witness to the truth of Islam and invite Canadians to become Muslim. Secondly, he said, when we get enough of people in Canada who are Muslim to get control of the political processes so that Canada will become a Dara Islam, 
a region ruled by Muslim authority. Those are the two faces of our mission in Canada. In the United States, many times in mosques, I ask my Muslim friends who I meet with, what is your mission? They say exactly the same thing. Those two faces of the Muslim global movement. Um, invitation and political action when possible. Now, not all Muslims feel that way. Uh, some Muslims will say, really? Living in the West, we are so much at peace. We love these democratic liberal societies that we don't really feel a need for political control. Um, but emulating the way Muhammad functioned in Medina, many do feel that somehow Islam is incomplete until there is political control. I suppose of all religions, Islam is the most optimistic about the use of political power to bring about truth and righteousness on earth. So the, the uh, inclination of our Muslim friends very often is, yes, let's bear witness, but let's also work actively at getting political control, if possible. TVS is a perfect way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support our educational and outreach ministry today. We exist solely upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvseminary.com. I was in Birmingham here a couple years ago and driving through the streets of Birmingham with a group of Muslim friends. They uh, said to me, David, we're now in Birmingham. Do you notice that this part of Birmingham has come under Islamic control? It's Dar al Islam. It's a region under Islamic authority. I said, yeah, I observed that that is probably true. And one of the obvious uh, dimensions of, uh, of that reality was that many of the billboards were, paint, were painted black. <laughs> if a billboard had a scantily clad woman on it or was an advertisement for alcohol or something like that, they painted it black. Well, they'd taken control of the town council, you see. And so with control of the town councils now, they could control what went on the billboards. Of course, I don't think it's such a bad idea to paint black over some of the billboard advertisements. And the Muslims just say, well, it's not only a good idea, let's do something about it. In the United States, when Muslims get political control over a city street, uh, there's no more drugs sold on that street, absolutely. You know, and no prostitution, nothing like that. No alcohol is sold on those streets, those blocks where Muslims have control, you see. That we need political control in order to clean up the neighborhoods. So that political action along with bearing witness, is very much a part of the Muslim DNA in terms of their understanding of their mission in the world in which we live. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at gmail.com.